Hello guys, Winston here, and today I'm in the woodshop side of Dragonfly Woodworking and Leather. We're solving a simple but persistent problem that Patrick's had for a couple months now. He makes these debossed leather patches that get sewed onto his wife Michelle's products, and usually he punches them out by hand. That's time consuming, and it adds a tiny bit of variability to the process. The Dragonfly logo doesn't always end up perfectly centered on the cutout patch. Those rejects sap time and money from their process. So to speed things up, Michelle bought him a bunch of leather rounds that were already cut to size. It saves time and material, but starting from pre-cut blanks means that trying to align the logo for debossing becomes trickier since you don't have any flat edges to visually reference. Patrick wanted a way to align his debossing stamp with a leather blank quickly and repeatably, so we set to work to fix that with the magic of CNC. A simple little fixture was all we needed. In Fusion, I modeled up a 3x3 inch block in which I left a hole sized perfectly to the debossing stamp. On the top face, I created a pocket for the leather round. I had to open up the inside corners to allow the stamp to fit through. I chose to dogbone the profile in the direction of the thickest remaining stock to maximize the overall strength of the fixture body. Moving into the cam workspace, this simple part has simple toolpaths. A contour up with a separate finishing pass ensures that the rectangular cutout for the stamp is as accurate as possible. Next is a pocketing operation that covers the semicircular cutouts. And finally, I get to cutting out the entire piece. I used a normal contour op with no finishing pass because this outer profile's dimensions aren't critical. For these operations, I'd be using an 8th inch long reach end mill at 10,000 RPM, and based on a gut feeling, I set the feed rate to about 30 inches per minute. My depth of cut was about 35 thou on the roughing and double that for finishing. Our stock for this project is some scrap 3 quarter inch oak. I taped it down with some Nitto Permacel PO2, hit run, and walked away to get something from my car, uttering these wise words as I left. <coughs> Ha, sorry to give you a heart attack, Patrick. It would seem that I had failed to set my origin point correctly for this setup. Fusion thought that I was zeroing off from the top of the stock, but I had actually zeroed off on the wasteboard. Minor mistake, I reposted my g-code and reran the program a couple millimeters further up to avoid the ugly gouge in the oak. And this time, I stuck around until after I had confirmed that the CNC was cutting in the correct location. The toolpath ran without drama, although I did dial back the feed rate during some of the roughing passes based on the sounds of the cut. The spindle was getting a little loaded up and you always want to leave a little performance margin just in case, say, you cut through your onion skin and your end mill gets gummed up with adhesive from your double-sided tape. You can hear the machine bogging down a little here. And also, before the Nomad got too far pocketing the recess for the leather rounds, I paused the program to remove the cutout rectangle of stock. The leadout for this pocketing operation had the end mill passing through that piece and I could see it moving ever so slightly. Once the toolpad's finished, I test fit the stamp and a leather blank. The stamp fit, though quite snugly, and some, but not all, of the leather blanks fit this pocket. The variability on these rounds was about 50 thou. Making an accurate one-size-fits-all jig just wasn't going to happen. We went downstairs to test it and found out that the thermal expansion of the brass caused the debossing stamp to get stuck in the hole. When you're debossing leather, you want a little heat in the stamp to help set the leather. That temperature delta will actually cause the brass to swell by about 2 thou. And remember that I designed this cutout to be the exact dimensions of the stamp. Rookie mistake, a little slop isn't a bad thing, we can fix that later. So here, we chamfered the top edge and opened up the interior dimension of that fixture with a file. And this time, we got success. The nice part is I don't have to, I don't care which way the die is, it's, you know, either way, it works. With that fixture validated, I went upstairs to make a second one based on the lessons learned from the first run. My initial rough and contour toolpaths would be run at 24 inches per minute now, finishing would still be at 30. The cutout of the rectangular opening for the stamp would have negative 6 thou stock to leave to enlarge that hole. The circular pocket would have negative 25 thou stock to leave, increasing the overall diameter by 50 thou. This would provide ample room for the oversized rounds to fit. We cut out a second fixture, and this one worked flawlessly from the start, no manual tweaking necessary. Now you could absolutely make this shape by hand, but ensuring the alignment of the circular and rectangular profiles would be a little tricky, and you would also need a perfectly sized Forstner bit. 
The CNC in this case ensures perfect alignment from the start and flexibility to iterate on the original design. Now Patrick has a tool to speed up the process of debossing his leather patches and improve yields and reduce waste. Not to overhype this thing, but anytime you can reduce headaches in your workflow, it's a huge win. I want to thank you all very much for watching, and if you want to see more of Patrick and Michelle's work, you can look them up as Dragonfly Woodworking and Leather. I'll be back with more stories from my CNC road trip soon.